Personal Finance Excel Practice Problem. Comprehensive Problem Part Number Two Creation of the Balance Sheet. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to the Excel worksheet, that's okay. In a prior presentation, we started to build this basically from a blank sheet. So you can go back there and start from there if you so choose. If you do have access, there's three tabs down below. We got an example tab, a practice tab, and a blank tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. In the prior presentation, we used the information on the left to build our amortization table for the home, breaking it out year by year. Now we're gonna be working on the balance sheet and then we'll focus on the income statement and then we'll look at an estimated property insurance that might be needed. So I'm gonna go back to the left. The second tab here is the practice tab. So we've got some pre-formatted cells so that you can build this if you so choose with less Excel formatting. And the third tab, we basically started this from scratch and building this out from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is first hide some cells. I'm gonna to go to the right and we're just gonna start building our balance sheet over here in column S. I'm gonna make a skinny S first and then hide some cells so we can see our data. I'm gonna put my cursor on the skinny end to make it the same skinny size. We're gonna to go to the home tab, clipboard and hit the format painter. And then we're gonna skinnerize the S, skinnerized it. And then I'm gonna go from R, put my cursor on R and I'm gonna drag all the way over cause I'm gonna hide this stuff. So C to R, C R, car, car, right click and it's gonna be hide. <clears throat> so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be working here on our balance sheet. So we've got the information on the left. So quick note on where you might get this information. The balance sheet, you can get a couple different ways. You can just compile it from your actual statements at the end of the period, or you could use accounting software, which would help you to, to enter transactions to get to that ending balance. We might dive more into the different softwares you can use in a future presentation, but just to get a quick look at them, just note there's kind of two kinds of software. One kind of software would be pulling in the ending balances, such as like a personal, uh, personal finance or personal capital that has a software like this, where you can actually connect to your financial institutions, bank accounts and your and your uh, credit cards and so on. And it can actually pull in the ending balances in there and give you some more kind of analysis and so on. But it'll basically give you a balance sheet for things that are financial account related. So in other words, it can't do that for like a car or something because that's not gonna be on the financial statement. You would have to add that separately if you want that in there. But most stuff that has a financial statement component, you can compile that. That would be similar to just looking through your bank statements at the end of the month and, and putting down the ending balances. You might have Quicken. I've not really worked with Quicken since they were not, they used to be owned by Intuit, the owner of QuickBooks, but it used to be good. I'm not sure exactly. I haven't worked for them for a while, but I think they have a similar kind of component. And then QuickBooks is something that's accounting software where you actually enter the transactions. You can connect to the bank with them as well. And then you enter the actual transactions, which is actually more helpful for the income statement, which we'll talk about next time. And then you're, you're gonna verify the ending balance. So it's not quite as easy to compile the balance sheet, but it's, it's a system that would be good to look at the performance. And then you also have Wave, which I think is a free like accounting system similar to QuickBooks. So you can kind of check that out if you're looking for a budgetary option that can kind of connect to the bank and you might be able to automate things. So do your research on it. But those are just some examples. So we're going to imagine this data we got from something like the ending balances and just compile this. You can get it, like I say, from the accounting software or we might get it, which would compile it for us in the terms of a balance sheet if we use that. Or we can then use our financial statements or we can imagine using some other software that would compile the ending balances. So let's build our balance sheet here. We're gonna say this is gonna be the balance sheet and we'll, we'll probably dive into those softwares in a future presentation as well. So I'm gonna make this black and white up top. We're gonna to go up top and say home tab, font group, make it black and white for our headers like we normally do. Assets are gonna be first up and I'm gonna break this out into current and non-current assets. So current assets, those are the more liquid assets. So I'm just gonna pull my data. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag this T column out a bit. So it's, it's fat, we're fattening up the T column, fatten it up. The T column needs to be fattened up a bit. Feed it some, 
feed it some cereal or something, some sugary cereal. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to the account checking account. I'm just going to pull in the data. That's a current asset, which of course we can get from the bank statement. We got the savings account we can get from the bank statement. If we needed to do it that way, we've got the emergency fund, which if it were in a bank would be in the bank statement, or if it's under the, if it's under your, 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 uh, mattress then you know you can count it <laughs> and then we've got we're going to say that the ira is something that you can't really pull out till retirement so i'm going to say i'm not going to put that in current assets because i can't really get it right now in, unless i wanted to be penalized i'd have to have a penalty so i'm going to say this is going to be the total total current assets and this is spelled wrong currenta that's like my spanish form it's got an a on the end of it because it's i don't know we're going to say this is the sum of these items. Just do the thing. Just do the thing. So this is going to be an underline. Let's go to the home tab, font group, underline. Let's do some indentation because we got the colons here. So I'm going to select these items. I'm going to indent it. We're going to select the total one down here and indent it again. And then I'm going to put the other assets. I'm going to put the other assets up top because they're these instead of putting them underneath like property, plants, and equipment, because I, I want to group the items that you might get from the financial institutions themselves up top. I'm going to put this under other assets. And the only thing we have in there is this IRA. So you might have that in something like, like an E-Trade or a Vanguard or something like that or your bank, but it's going to be a long-term type of thing and you can't access it uh, as easily. So I'm gonna put it down here. This is another thing that you could get, of course, from the bank statements or from software that pulls the ending balances. So I'm gonna put this in the outer column because it's the only one I have. So I'm just gonna put that right into the outer column. This is gonna equal that 40,000. 40,000, let's do an indent there, alignment indent. Now this one also has an added kind of issue that it could go up and down in value when the stocks go up and down. And when you record the increase and decreases that you have not yet realized, that's a kind of a bookkeeping issue that we might dive into a little bit later. Uh, and when we get into just, we might just do some accounting on it. So then we've got the property plant and equipment that I'll call it. So this is your property. We're gonna say property plant and equipment. And so that's kind of like a business category or a term, but this is the this is your fixed asset type of stuff. So for example, you've got the home in here. So we're gonna put the home in here. And when I put the home in, I'm gonna put it in at cost. So I'm gonna say the home is at cost. I gotta I gotta unhide some cells to do it. Well, let's just let's unhide some cells to do that real quick. I'm gonna unhide from B. Do I have the cost down here? Maybe I do. It's down here. You don't have to unhide anything. Hold your horses, hold your horses. Why? Because the horse looks like it needs a hug. You've been, it's been hard on the horse. The horse needs to be held for a second. So there's the home. And then we're gonna say the car. We got car one and car two. So I think those are down here. Where did I put the cars? Car one, car two, they're right there. I'm going to I'm going to put my cursor here and drag that down with the fill handle. So there's car 1, car 2, and this is the 14 and the 21. Now the reason these are a little bit more tricky because you can't get this stuff from the financial institution. So if I was to connect to the financial institutions with something like a personal capital software, they can't they can't get the information for my home value but they can estimate the home value using an estimator tool. So some, some of them have a, a nice tool to do that. And obviously my car, again, you don't know what it is. So traditionally from an accounting standpoint, you would put it on there at the cost and then you would allocate the, the you would depreciate it. But a home, hopefully it's gonna go up in value. So a home's a little bit tricky. The car we would expect to go down in value. So we would put it on there on the books at cost and then possibly depreciate it or you can try to do it like an appraisal from time to time. But you gotta be careful with that when you do the appraisals on these types of things. Cause for example, with the home, if you think it went up in value and you record it, you didn't really realize that increase in the value cause you didn't sell it 
uh, and therefore it's just a it's just a gain that's unrealized gain. So you got to be kind of careful on that. So these three, we're going to start and imagine we put them on there by by cost, what we paid for them, and then we might adjust them periodically, possibly with the use of some kind of depreciation system, or possibly doing a periodic kind of appraisal. And when you make the adjustment on these things, we have the same kind of problem, which is if I had a gain, you know, where does the where does the other side go? If the home went up in value, do I record it on the income statement? Do I record it in equity uh, in terms of that gain in the value because I haven't yet realized it? So we might talk about that more later, but just keep that in mind. I'm going to do some indentation here, alignment indent, and I'm going to call this total property plant and equipment and put that in the outer column equals the SUM, otherwise known as the sum, our favorite form, EULA, our favorite form, EULA, alignment, indent, indent, double indent. Let's make the T column a bit larger. Let's put a little underline right here because that'll make it look better. Home tab, font group, underline. And there's the pro property, plants, and equipment. So that's going to give us our total assets then. Finally, total assets, summing up the outer column equals the SUM. And we'll sum that up. There we have it. And so something looks a little bit different than I thought here. Now, I think that's right. I think that's right. So I'm going to put an underline here, font group and underline. And let's put a double underline here, font group and double underline. We can put the liabilities in like the equity or the net, the net assets underneath, or we can put them on the right. I'm going to put them on the right here to emphasize the balance sheet on the balance sheet. I'm going to make a skinny W to do it. I'm just going to, let's put, let's take the skinny S and then home tab and format paint it and put that on the W, skinnerizing it. And so this is going to be the liability side. I'm going to put down here liability. Li that's not an I. Liabil liabilities. And then we've got current liabilities. Colon. And that's going to be, we got the student loans. There's nothing in it, but I'll add it anyways, because you might have student loans. For example, let's make X a little bit wider here. Put my curse between X and Y, between the X and Y chromosomes <laughs> or something. And we're going to say this is going to be the credit card balance. And then this is going to be the car loans. Pulling up the totals. The totals are going to be equal to the zero. I'm going to just copy that down with the fill handle. Now, note that the car loan might be like a long term. I'm going to imagine it's less than a year that it's going to be due. So I'm going to keep it up here in the current liabilities section. I'm going to select those three. And let's do an indentation and then give us the current, the total, total current liabilities. And then tab, tab, put that in the outer column equals the S to the U to the M. Sum brackets of these three. Enter. Let's put an underline under the 7,000 home tab font group. Underline. Put an, a line underneath. Call it an underline. Home tab, appropriately named alignment, double indent, double time. So there we have that. And then we've got the long-term liability. Long-term liabilities, brackets. And we're going to have the home loan now, which I don't think is over here. I think we might have to unhide some cells. Did I have that over here? Do I have the home loan? The, no, let's so unhide some cells so we can pick that up. So I'm going to put my cursor on B and I'm going to drag over the T, BT, but, and then right click and then we're going to unhide. We're going to go all the way to the, to the right to pick this up. And here's the home loan. We did that calculation right there. The two, and let's imagine that a year has now passed. So the home loan is now going to be one year later, which will be, I'm going to pull that from this schedule. And that's why it's kind of useful to have this amortization schedule. Now, again, if you were to pull this from a financial institution and your loan was from the financial institution, you might get the statement, which would have your Indian loan balance on it. Or if you were used using something like personal financial, it might then have your Indian loan balance on it that it would then be including but 
uh, if you're compiling it, you also could use a, a table like this. And this would also help you, this table, if you were doing the same process, creating a balance sheet and an income statement and projecting forward, doing a budget type, type of perspective. So we're gonna imagine a year has passed. We've got the uh, 241, 346, which you could get from your loan statement. You could get from your personal capital kind of calculation as well. So I'm gonna put that down here. This is gonna be, I'm gonna call it the home loan. And I'm gonna put that in the outer column because we have no other long-term liabilities. That's gonna be the 241, 346. Also note that the student loan, the credit card and the car loans are also probably with financial institutions that you oftentimes can link with something like a software like this. So you, you, could, you can pull that information automatically in if you were to use the software like this on that ending balance stuff. Uh, if you were to use QuickBooks, then you would verify it to the ending balance because you would do actual, the actual bookkeeping. So you can get the income statement side of things. And so uh, that's some tools that we might look into more later too. We have some courses on those if you wanna check them out already. Home tab, alignment and indent here. And so then let's see, that's gonna be, what's, what else do we have? What else do we have? That's gonna be the total liabilities. We're gonna say this is the total liabilities and we'll sum them up in the outer column equals the S to the U to the M brackets, sum it por favor, we'll put an underline here, home tab, font group, and underline. Now, oftentimes, you'll have the bottom line of your personal balance sheet just called the net assets, which is kind of like the, which is similar to the equity term for a balance sheet. I still like to see it in balance at the end of the day. So I'll calculate my net assets up here, net assets. So if we were to construct it in this format, then we can get to our net assets by saying this is going to be equal to my my total assets minus my total liabilities that would give me the the net assets and that's often how a software like this would have to compile it because they're just looking at the ending balance if you looked at software like this quickbooks and you actually did the full bookkeeping and verified the ending balance then you would see it in terms of an accounting equation because you would actually be entering the data and so then you'd have a balancing kind of calculation over here and you would say then this would be total assets and liabilities bottom line would equal the sum of these two which 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 would match out this one has to be in balance home tab font group we're going to say underline clearly this is in balance because we forced it to be in balance by taking net assets as this minus this item up top if you put it into accounting system then the double accounting system would would check itself that would be the point of the double entry accounting system so you wouldn't just kind of force in the net assets but that's the general idea we might dive into some more of those softwares at a later time and it's fairly it looks complex but it's fairly easy to compile a balance sheet so you've got you can compile this stuff you might also be thinking well there's other stuff that's not on there like we might have other household goods. I might go into my home and count like the television and, the, and all the other household goods, which could add up to quite a bit of stuff that we put on there. But you may or may not want to put them onto a normal balance sheet unless you need to, unless you're trying to look like good, as good as possible so that you can, so that you can get a loan or something like that. Uh, or obviously you want to list that stuff out as well in the event that you have an insurance situation and you got to see what the losses were because you can't really verify the television as easily in terms of what the current price is. You can put them on there at cost, but it's not a very liquid asset and you can't really verify, you can't tie it out to other, other uh, things like the personal capital as easily because it's not coming from a financial institution. It will generally go down in value so therefore it's going to be it's going to be difficult to kind of track it on the real time so you can kind of decide if you want to put other personal assets on the balance sheet depending on what your needs and how you're going to basically update those items from period to period but to get this flat financial stuff uh, on there it could be fairly simple and you have different tools to help you to do that okay so then let's go and format this i'm gonna i'm gonna make this this whole thing over here let's make that black and white home tab font group black and white 
We could then merge these like this, so the balance sheet's in the middle, but I don't like doing that because then it, it like makes that one wide cell when none of, the, none of the other cells are like that. So that's, I'd rather right click on it and go to the format cells and then go to the alignment and horizontal. I'm gonna center it across, center it across. Mucho mejor, that's much better. And then I'm gonna say, let's select these ones. Let's do the blue border thing. And then I'm holding down control to have two non-adjacent items. You can do them one at a time too, that I can blue border at the same time. So those two, we're gonna go then font group, make it blue. If you don't have that blue, it's down here. It's in right there. There's the blue we're using and borders. So there we have the border blue and let's check the spelling on it if we could spell check it liabilities i never spell it right how many times have you spelled that word it's just ridiculous so does everything else look pretty good what do you guys think is it formatted at least up to par it's not pissing anyone off no one's raging no one's getting upset at, at an obvious error that i have in some formatting capacity okay that's good then next time we'll go into the income statement